Hallelujah. 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 Our God is worthy of praise. Our God is worthy of worship. Amen. Amen. May please be seated for a few minutes. I'm going to read from the book of Ephesians, uh, the 19th chapter. I will read from verses 1 through to verse 7. Sorry, the book of Acts, not Ephesians. The book of Acts, chapter 19, from verses 1 through to verse 7. Acts 19, 1 through to verse 7. Um, if you can pull up the New International Version, I'd appreciate that. It says, while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul took the road through the interior and arrived at Ephesus. There he found some disciples and he asked them, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? Ask your neighbor, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believed? And they answered, no, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. So Paul asked, then what baptism did you receive? Uh, John's baptism, they replied. And Paul said, John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. He told the people to believe in the one coming after him. That is in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul placed his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them. And they spoke in tongues and they prophesied. There were about 12 men in all. Now, the verses we have just read say that while, while Paul was in Ephesus, he encountered a group of about 12 men. And the Bible calls them disciples, yeah? But the reality is that they were disciples of a man called Apollos. Now, Apollos was an evangelist. The Bible tells us that he was eloquent, very well spoken, he was fervent, and he loved God. Yeah? But he was not one of the original 12 apostles uh, who had walked with Jesus. So, when Paul asked them if they had received the baptism, what baptism did they receive? Right? If they had received the baptism of the Holy Spirit when they believed. I'm not really sure why he asked them that question. Yeah? Maybe he saw something in them that made him question whether they had the Holy Spirit or, or not, yeah? But they responded to him by saying, no, we, we've never heard of the Holy Spirit. And Paul was shocked. But I want us to pay attention to what happened next. He said to them, so what baptism did you receive? If you, did not, if you do not have the Holy Spirit, what baptism did you receive? And they said, we received the baptism of John. Now, why would Paul ask them what baptism they had received? Because he wanted to uncover what they really believed. Amen? When Paul heard that they did not know the Holy Spirit, they had not received the Holy Spirit, what he questioned was what they believed. Because the presence of the Holy Spirit is based on what you believe. And these men, they believed in the teachings of John the Baptist. And what did John the Baptist teach? Repent. Repent. And when the Messiah comes, believe in him. So that means that these men did not know that the Messiah had come. And if they knew that he had come, they did not believe in him. Because it is possible to repent and not believe in Christ. To repent simply means that you turn away from. Amen? These men, they repented. It means that they turned away from the direction they were walking. They turned away from sin. You can reject sin, but not turn to Jesus. They turned away from sin, but they did not turn to Jesus. They turned away from sin, but they stayed in this holding pattern. Amen? Where they, maybe they turned to the law. Maybe they turned to their own strength. Maybe they turned to their own willpower. Maybe they decided to depend on their conscience to guide them. Whatever it was that they turned to, 
it was not to Jesus. Amen? There are many in this church, there are many at home, who believe that sin is wrong. Amen? Who believe that sin is bad. Who reject a sinful life in all of its manifestation. But they don't turn to Jesus. They turn to a, 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 a lifestyle based on, on moral principles. Some choose to live an ascetic lifestyle, rejecting the pleasures of the flesh. And like John the Baptist, they eat only locust and wild honey, but they don't turn to Jesus. And many times, you can tell who those people are. They mean well, but they're judgmental. They mean well, but they are self-righteous. They love the Lord, but they don't really love God's people. They are morally upright, but they are spiritually bankrupt. They still live in fear of a terrible and vengeful God. They had heard about Christ. They, they had heard about Jesus, but they had not accepted that he died specifically to pay for their sins. And there are many of us who have been told that if we accept Jesus, if we walk boldly and quickly to the front of the church, all our problems will be solved and will be saved. If you stop sinning, we're told, God will bless you. So we reject sin. If you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, your Lord and your Master, everything will be fine. But my brothers and sisters, it is not just about accepting Jesus, the man. It is not just about believing in his teachings that he, he taught on the, on the Sermon on the Mount. It is not just about agreeing with the Lord's prayer. It is about receiving the gift of his sacrifice. It is about believing that he hung on the cross to pay for all your sins, past, present, and future. It is about believing. It is about believing that he was your substitute in the place of judgment. He stood in your place on the day of judgment and he took your place on the cross. It happened 2,000 years ago in a, in a Roman colony called Jerusalem. But if it was 2024 in Texas, he would be taking your place on the lethal injection table. If it was 2024 in Florida, he would be taking your place on the electric chair. It is about believing that he died instead of you dying. There's so many things that we say that do not, that hide the meaning of what is going on. The Bible says, then when they heard and they believed, Paul laid hands on them and they were filled with the Holy Spirit. All they did was believe. It is not enough, my brothers and sisters, to believe that sin is bad. It is not enough to agree that you should not be sinning. You have to believe that Jesus died to pay for your sins. And the, the, the reality is that some of us come to that place of belief instantly. We hear the message one time and we believe. And some of us take a minute to get there. Some of us are already there. We believe. And there are some who are struggling with questions about how is it possible for one man to die to pay the price for the sins of so many. But to receive the Holy Spirit, all you have to do is believe that Jesus died, that his blood was shed to pay for your sins. 
Now, if you say, PF, I have not received the Holy Spirit, the question that Paul asks you is, what do you believe? If you believed in Jesus, then I want to say to you, without any fear of contradiction, you have the Holy Spirit. You may not sense him. You may not be aware of his presence, but he's there. He lives in you. This morning, I want to pray for all who have believed in Jesus, but are not sure that they have the Spirit. All who believe, but do not sense the presence of the Spirit. I know many of us, uh, we, we think that speaking in tongues is the evidence of the Holy Spirit. And that's not correct. The Bible talks about how 3,000 people were saved, but does not mention whether they spoke in tongues or not. The Bible talks about how a, 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 a few thousand priests heard the message of Jesus and they were saved. Doesn't talk about them speaking in tongues. 5,000 people were saved. Doesn't say a word about them speaking in tongues. There were incidents where people were saved and they spoke in tongues, but speaking in tongues is not the evidence of the Holy Spirit because the Bible says by their fruit you shall know them and the fruit of the Spirit is love Amen Many of us are struggling in our walk with Jesus in our walk with God because we do not lean on the Holy Spirit because we do not believe we have the Holy Spirit we are trying to do in our strength by our ability, through our willpower, what it is impossible for us to do. The Bible tells us in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, when Jesus Christ was about to ascend to his father, he said to the disciples, wait in Jerusalem. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be witnesses in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and the uttermost ends of the earth, there is a power that comes from the Holy Spirit that you need to live out the life of Christ. There is a divine enablement that comes from the Holy Spirit that you need to fulfill the calling of God upon your life. There is a clarity that you need, from the Holy, the, you need from the Holy Spirit to know the things that God has freely given to you. And there are some of us here who don't believe. We struggle, we've got questions. But this morning I pray for you that the Holy Spirit, that the Almighty God will open your heart and that you will receive the gift, the free gift that God offers us in Jesus Christ. And those of us who have the Holy Spirit, those of us who already believe and question whether we have the Holy Spirit, sometimes you have to stir it up. Don't you remember? Say, stir it up. Paul said to Timothy, stir up the gifts of God that you have received by the laying on of hands. Stir it up. This morning, as we rise to our feet, let us rise. If you are here this morning and you believe in Jesus, but you question or you are watching at home and you believe that Jesus died for you, can I have the choir back? You believe that Jesus died for you, you believe that He hung on the cross to pay for your sins you accept that gift but you question whether you have the Holy Spirit you question whether you've been baptized in the Spirit of God I want you wherever it is you are even at home just raise your hand really quick and I'm going to pray for you just say Father I thank you I thank you for your Holy Spirit I receive him into my life with thanksgiving in the mighty name of Jesus Heavenly Father, I pray for these, your children, in the name of Jesus, that you will grant them, Almighty God, an assurance of that which you deposited in them at the point in which they believed. 
I pray almighty God that the power of the Holy Spirit residing in them will be activated almighty God that through them almighty God witnesses of your word may fill the earth we give you all the praise and all the glory and so father we thank you father your word says that you have not given us the spirit of fear but the spirit of power the spirit of love and the spirit of a sound mind father I thank you because the yoke of fear has been broken I thank you because the yoke of anxiety has been broken I thank you father because you lose your children this morning from heavy burdens father I thank you because this morning captives are set free I thank you father because this morning blind eyes are opened I thank you father that the sick are healed father I thank you because the worst case scenario will not come to pass we give you praise and we give you glory in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we have prayed there's one more thing I want us to pray about and then I will leave the kids have gone back to school elementary school kindergarten elementary school high school college grad school and a few days ago we heard about what happened in Georgia where some child goes into school with a gun and people lost their lives I want us to pray for all our children I want us to pray that the mercy of God will prevail concerning them I want us to plead the blood of Jesus over them the Bible says that because of the blood of the Lamb the angel of death will pass over the homes of his people father we pray for our children for every child almighty God that is represented in this church almighty God concerning them wherever they may be in school father whether it is kindergarten or elementary school or or middle school or high school or college or grad school almighty God we plead the blood of Jesus concerning them we plead the blood of Jesus father over the doorpost and the lintels of their lives and we say that because of the blood of Jesus every contrary spirit must pass over them the spirits that cause random violence almighty God the spirits that work in ungodly men and women the spirits almighty God of the antichrist and the evil ones almighty God we pray that it will not prevail in the lives of our children Almighty God, we ask that you give your angels charge over each and every one of our sons and daughters that Father, even as they go to their places of learning, they will come back with an education but Father, not with bullet holes or with pain. Almighty God, their blood will not spill on the ground of this country. My Father and my God, they will live long and they will declare the glory of God in their generation. Father, we will not mourn our children Almighty God, we will not weep over our sons and our daughters. We will rejoice in their victory. We will rejoice in their elevation. We will celebrate their progress in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray for those who have lost their sons, who have lost their daughters. We pray that, Father, you will comfort them with a comfort that comes only from you. We pray that you will minister to the hearts, the hearts of the hearts of the leadership of this country that they will think first of our children they will think first of our sons and our daughters over and above almighty God father we plead the blood of Jesus the Bible says that no weapon that is formed against us shall prosper and every tongue that will rise up to judge us that will rise up to accuse us to accuse our children father today we silence with the blood of Jesus Satan concerning our children the blood is against you Satan concerning our children the Lord rebuke you 
in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we have prayed Father we thank you Almighty God we bless you and we give you praise we thank you Father for all your sons and daughters who stand before you this morning Almighty God we commit ourselves into your hands we ask Father that from this moment forward that the blood of Jesus will speak better things on our behalf than the blood of Abel ever spoke that the blood of sprinkling Almighty God will prevail Almighty God we just ask that you will bless your children that you will cause your face to shine upon your children that you will lift up your countenance over them and that you will grant them your peace I pray for each and every one of them Almighty God that no weapon that is formed against them shall prosper that every enchantment and every divination spoken against them shall fail in the name of Jesus that father like a, 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 a sparrow finds no place to perch so also every curse spoken against them shall fly around and find nowhere to perch in their lives in the name of Jesus I thank you father that every demonic yoke is broken in their lives this morning in the mighty and precious name of Jesus we have prayed and somebody said hallelujah hallelujah Hallelujah!